Okay, so this is the Paragon Santa Monica aluminum gazebo that you can find at Costco. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to cover over uh, some of the things you should probably consider if you're looking at purchasing this gazebo. I'll do a little review and some assembly instructions. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I would say I've had it for about a month now, but you can hear uh, it cracking when the temperature changes, when it gets hotter. It kind of pops so i'm a little concerned maybe over time there might be some wear and tear going on with it but uh it's been holding up against the weather pretty good uh provides some pretty good shade and after it's all assembled it feels fairly sturdy but the materials aren't the best quality they're a little bit thin but um should be good enough so i'm a little concerned during the winter time how much snow is going to be able to handle um I'm fairly certain it can handle maybe a couple feet of snow, two feet, maybe anything more than two feet. I might be a little concerned when the panels might fall in because again, they're not the thickest uh, roofing panels, but they are, they, they seem fairly strong. Okay, so the gazebo comes with these tools. Uh, this, it's a four millimeter um, Allen wrench and a very thin uh wrench is it's a 12 millimeter wrench and i would suggest just throw that wrench away it's very thin it hurts it bends so these are the tools i would suggest getting before you even start so the allen wrench is is usable but um you're you're not going to be able to put all the screws in using that allen wrench especially the roof panels you're going to want something that attaches to a drill i would highly suggest getting something uh, that's kind of low profile with the four mil hex key uh, because um, there are a couple holes where something like this uh, won't fit in but for the majority of screws even this one would work too so if you have something like that that would work uh, you may want to get uh, another allen wrench again a four millimeter allen wrench it would work good or even a t wrench um, would work also get a 12 millimeter wrench and then you're going to want a 12 millimeter socket either on a ratchet would work fine but also um, something that can attach it to a drill uh, because it, it is just going to make things a little bit easier so one thing i want to point out too before you begin it says have two small step ladders uh, I, I would suggest um, to have at least one. You probably don't need two, um, but you're going to need two, at least six foot ladders to put the roofing panels in. Also the instructions, it says to use at least three people to attach it. So this entire gazebo, one person could do this. It, there's gonna be a couple things that are very difficult for one person highly recommend at least two uh the more you have the better um but one person could put this together uh you just will have to you'll struggle with the roof part you would have to build some type of brace or mount to be able to hold it up while you mount it in but once you get it mounted in uh then you'll be good to go and then i did most of the work my wife helped on um several parts uh, together, it took us maybe six hours to put the entire gazebo together. So plan for a very long day. So this is my patio and I'm starting to unbox everything, trying to, I guess, get my head wrapped around everything, understand what's inside of all the boxes. So the instructions are actually pretty well laid out. They tell you where every part is and what box and the boxes are numbered. Um, so. You should be able to find everything. I, I would definitely suggest pull out a lot of the items because there's a lot of styrofoam pieces and there's a lot of pieces inside other pieces like the big columns. So just get all those pulled out and ready so you can quickly grab those when needed. All right, so one of the first things the instructions tell you to do is put a lot of these like brackets um, on the roofing columns or braces. There's a lot of them. Uh, this is where the drill really comes in uh, handy uh, versus you trying to use the little hand Allen wrench. So again, here's the instruction booklet. So again, the, I guess they call it the rails. There's a thick metal piece that goes in between that. That's pretty straightforward and, and, and easy. Just don't put screws uh, in there. 
uh, that I did at first. You end up having to take them out. But when you start doing these brackets, all these little brackets here, this is where it can get a little confusing because see the lines? It's like, it's really hard to tell what, what this actually is. I mean, I couldn't tell you how many times I had to go back and forth. Luckily, I actually got it right the first time uh, just by looking at the edges and this is the long one and this is a small one. So these are actually different. Um, and then when you're done with it, it should look completely like this. So uh, again, just make sure you get these all right. If not, you're gonna have to end up uh, taking them all out. When I was putting these rails together, there was one rail I just could not get a screw in. I'm like, what is going on? So I'm sitting here, I'm looking at it and you know, it looks fine. And then I grab one of these screws and I try to put it in and I notice there's no threads in the hole. See right there? It's just a drilled hole. It hasn't been tapped. And then you can see the threads in the other holes that it's been tapped. Just not that hole. Luckily I have tap. It is, if you can see, six millimeter 1.0 thread. So make sure you have this tap. You probably don't need it, but if you end up having a plate like I did with no threads, that can really ruin your day. You should do it on a flat, stable surface, but for science, let's do this right here. Should be an issue though. And I did the wrong side. I just cleaned the thread up. I was wondering why that was going in so easy. All right, so it's these two. Yeah, definitely no threads. I can feel it digging in. You can see it cutting. Okay, so with that out the way, I laid everything out and I'm going to start trying to assemble, I guess, the, the main frame. So by putting the short columns or the short rails onto the columns. So this is where having two people really helps to put these long rails in, but as you can see, I did it by myself, so it's certainly doable by one person. So I just put one side in kind of loose, and then I just lifted up the other side and screwed it in. And then after that, I did the same exact thing to the other side. This time I used a step stool because it was just at the very peak of my arm reach and uh, the step stool made things a lot easier. Okay, so this is what you're dealing with as far as the screws and the holes. So that's why I said uh, having like a low profile uh, extension to be able to go inside of there is ideal. And you can do these by hand or you can use the drill. So with the, I guess the structure complete now, I can start working on the roofing frame. So this is where you're going to want at least six foot ladder. If you have one of those extension type ladders that can go up to maybe eight foot, that's very helpful. So the tabs that these little rails or frames bolt onto are really thin. They bend very easy. I was afraid that one of these might break because uh, they're constantly being, you know, bend back and forth. Um, but luckily none of them broke on us. 
Again, if you have something that can hold up that middle piece, like a, a pole or something, you could do this by yourself, but having a second person is uh, very helpful. So here's something to watch out for when you are screwing these rails in. If you drop it down that column, uh, good luck fetching that out. So after that center piece is uh, securely screwed down, and just put the other rails in just one at a time and it's fairly easy at that point. So after all the rails are in, you just put the roof cover on and then you start tightening everything down. So with everything fastened down, now ready for the roof panel. So each of the roof panels has like a plastic uh, cover around it that needs to get peeled off so I was peeling it off while it was leaning on a rail and it, it's actually not that easy it, it took a long time and eventually my hands got really sore and that plastic layer like that vinyl cover I'm not sure exactly what it is it's on both sides it needs to be peeled off uh, the side that is um, I guess on the inside where the, the white pan part of the panel is it's much thinner and it rips so it was even harder to peel that side off so this was probably the worst and probably the most difficult part of putting this entire gazebo was just peeling this vinyl cover off of the roof panels so later we found was if we laid this on the ground and um, you put all your weight on it and then pull it off from there, it comes off so much faster and so much easier. So definitely do it that way. Don't rest it on a rail like I'm doing here. It just does not work. So just follow the instructions putting these panels on. You have to put one on and then work around clockwise uh, to put each panel on. So one thing to note here when you're putting these panels on initially, there's only one thing holding it and it's one screw at the bottom so uh, make sure you put that screw in there's already a pre-drilled hole inside the panel uh, and you don't drill your own hole now the panels themselves are not that heavy especially like this corner one but you know we're like five hours in now extremely exhausted uh, just be careful to not drop these i'm not sure if they'll break uh, there's some type of aluminum composite. You can see like little aluminum pieces inside of it, but they're very, they seem like they bend very easy. I just don't know if they'll break easy. So after you get a panel in, you have to put this roofing profile in and it slides into the rails that you put in and then it goes over the roofing panels. And then when you screw them down, it kind of clamps them together. So. At first I was really suspicious about this that I didn't think it would work very well but after I screwed everything down it, it seems fairly secure I guess time will tell to see how well it really holds up and this is what I mean by um, this roofing profile it slides into the groove here so you got to make sure you get it in the groove and not on the outside because there's gonna be a, a screw or a bolt that comes up and screws into this and getting that aligned, if you don't have this right, it's not going to catch inside there. There's no holes, so that's why I'm saying this was a little suspicious. Kind of wish I took a better video of it, um, but there's the screw that goes in into this rail, and it goes in between these two things, and it just catches somehow. There, there's like uh, no real threads, but it catches in there. When it screws down and tightens down, the roofing panel is sandwiched in between this so that's what holds the roofing panels down all right with everything assembled i'm actually going to move it in place i do not recommend anyone do this uh, i thought i was going to blow my back out uh, just inching this along but uh, luckily I, I didn't get injured so after I got it in place, I went ahead and drilled the holes into my patio and I put the, um, the concrete anchors that it came with. They're okay, they're not the best anchors, but they're good enough. Um, and then that was it. So far, I'm really enjoying the gazebo. I guess time will tell to see how long it holds up, but it, I, I think it'll hold up for a long time. And this is like one major piece that I need for my outdoor kitchen. 
So I need to find a way to put a fan in here, how to put, I guess, some type of screen doors around and keep the bugs out. And then my next outdoor kitchen project is going to be creating some type of concrete countertop slash stove for my Kamado. Anyways, if this helped you, uh, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.